Okay, so thanks uh, for the presentation, uh, and uh, it's great pleasure to talk about it here. And uh, uh, first, I will talk about something a little bit uh, uh, totally different from everybody who's working out. And also, uh, I first want to say that it's less theoretical, you know, so, so there is less uh, uh, topology calculation in the school. Um, but there's still something I just uh, feel very motivated to, to think again about the uh, model. Uh, so this work is uh, uh, done with uh, uh, my students and my postdoc, and uh, there are various papers you can check if you find any paper interesting to, to see. Um, so as uh, I have learned a lot from this uh, workshop, and uh, so that's kind of the reason I kind of attended a workshop, which uh, I uh, have the uh, participants, I, most of them I've never met before. Um, so I saw that there are lots of interesting things happening at, uh, I, I just call it the EV scale, which is so atomic physics, solid state physics, and also something uh, interesting happening at a uh, uh, QCD scale, I, uh, several talks about the related to neutron star, there are some uh, uh, interesting topological states at that uh, scale. Um, but uh, as we can imagine, there, there are still lots of uh, higher scale uh, physics. And uh, the question is uh, what kind of uh, uh, topological states can be in, in this uh, uh, higher energy scale, for example. So generally, if you think, so first of all, I'm not going to think about anything about uh, one plus one, two plus one. I only think about three plus one. Uh, so that means that uh, in general, you can think about uh, there are some Domain modes, cosmic strings, and monopoles, for example, in general, right? Um, for example, you have some uh, uh, axion string, and uh, there are lots of discussion about that in the, in the part of the physics community. There are also something about like a domain wall, for example. Uh, I, I also kind of start to think about what kind of domain wall can change the early universe dynamics, specifically, uh, what type of domain wall maybe that can change it. The QCD phase transition, for example, if uh, there are some other alumnus uh, uh, ZN symmetry or Z2 symmetry under QCD uh, symmetry, maybe uh, we could have some initial domain wall, or there would be some C type to zero, C type to pi, and uh, their QCD uh, final temperature phase transition in the C type to pi could be different, could be first order. There may be there are some interesting um, consequences of that, for example. Uh, there may be some ways to form um, interesting states that are part matter states uh, or some gravitation wave can be detected. So kind of starts to also think about uh, 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 how the domain was changed in the early universe physics, for example. But in this talk, I will concentrate on uh, multiple. And first of all, all those uh, uh, little bit high energy scale, high scale uh, topological states, they are difficult to be produced at lab. Uh, so therefore we have to think about some other ways, either astrophysical objects or early universe. And uh, imagine there are several early universe, so they can go very, very high uh, temperature, for example, they can go to high like a 10 to 10 GeV or 10 to 14 GeV. And uh, so maybe there are some uh, uh, defects can be generated in the early universe. So then we can think about how to improve that. So in this talk, I, uh, multiple, in, to some extent, is the simplest one. It's more like a point-like object, right? So, um, so let's uh, see what uh, we can. Let's uh, just give you a very, very simple uh, history about the monopole. We'll start with Dirac, uh, um, but uh, even before Dirac, there is Pierre uh, uh, Curie. Yeah, okay. uh, proposed a possible existence of a monopole, and the Dirac uh, pointed out that. Uh, uh, if it exists, then that maybe can explain the quantization, uh, charge quantization. And uh, what I show you here is uh, some kind of a uh, very long solid. solid uh, then you can see that uh, there is a, uh, you, you want to hide this kind of Dirac string, and uh, then you do quantum mechanics around this, then you you can uh, potentially explain the uh, quantization for the charge. Here, I just give a little notation. You have a magnetic uh, field around the, around this monopole point that goes like one of R square. And then we define some kind of uh, corresponding um, magnetic uh, coupling. The magnetic coupling is a two pi over E, just a set of the, uh, the notation for this talk. And then that coupling is large. And uh, so you don't, 
don't do perturbative calculation for that. Uh, so, but there is one more thing about a Dirac multiple, probably everybody knows. And uh, if you have the uh, B, right, so you calculate the, uh, the, the energy around this multiple, uh, then you have a B square, which will be one over R to the fourth. Then you do the uh, uh, R square dr integration, you realize that uh, will be divergent. And uh, uh, in, when R is uh, close to zero, so that means that uh, the energy of this state is not uh, finite. And, uh, so I will also pay attention to this kind of one of R square throughout this talk and try to say uh, which states and uh, how that uh, one of R square uh, uh, integration get a, get a, get a become finite. Okay. So, but also this evolves in 19, around like 1974, then there is talk of Polykov uh, monopole. Uh, so which is a finite energy. Um, so the, um, the simplest model, which will be SU2 break to U1. So what do you write down? You write down some uh, uh, gate, uh, SU2 gauge interaction, and then uh, you write down some uh, uh, triplet representation. This is a phi A. A is the gauge index, one, two, three. Um, then there are some potential, uh, like usually we do a spontaneous gauge symmetry breaking. Then you trying to study the classical equation of motion for those fields uh, in this simple Lagrangian. Mm -hmm. Then you realize that you can, there are some gauge dependence uh, after you uh, fix uh, A0 equals to zero, then you uh, call it a hedge hog gauge, for example. Basically, this arrow, you can think about uh, there is a sphere. The arrow is the uh, gauge index orientation in the gauge space. And you will find that uh, if that uh, matches to the, uh, the different orientation, that is like a hedge hog uh, configuration. So practically, you see that uh, we can uh, think about this uh, scalar field and uh, uh, has some orientation uh, proportional to the R, which is a space uh, uh, vector. And then there's some uh, generic scale, there are some function, which is a spheric, only depends on the uh, radius. And then the gauge field, uh, you have a two index of, uh, you have a gauge index, you have the uh, space index, that is proportional to epsilon A i j, and also some R height j, and there's some another function uh, defined to be U R. And then there is one R. So for example, if you have UR equals to zero in the far away from this uh, monopole, then that uh, then you calculate the B field that will give you one of R square um, for the B field. Uh, this uh, spherical configuration that will be correspond to the um, multiple charge Q equals to two. And uh, so it's uh, not the, the, the Q equals to the uh, smallest charge. And uh, okay, so let me, uh, trying to concentrate on a little bit about that uh, integration issue we were talking about. So you can uh, ask what is the total energy of the um, top, top, top polyacoff monopole. Then you can calculate, for example, the magnetic energy, which is the first term. And then, then there is a uh, derivative of the scalar field as well as the potential term of the scalar field. So in general, you can separate in, into a few parts. So then you can have some derivative, then there's some, uh, uh, remember this U field is related to the gauge field, right? And uh, then you can still see that there is one over R to the fourth. So roughly speaking, that is the magnetic field energy and the magnetic field square give you that. But now you can see that it's different from Dirac uh, monopole. You also have this U square together with this one, for example. So therefore you have a, a freedom choose a specific boundary condition, you have, have this U function equals to one. So therefore you can have a, at origin when R equals to uh, zero, this, uh, this is canceled. So then you don't have the divergence uh, problem when you do the integration. Right? Okay, so here then the eventually this is just a double, uh, two field double differential equation with a full boundary condition. Everybody can solve this. And uh, we can solve that uh, to get some behavior, uh, how does, uh, um, gauge field behaves how the scalar field behaves. So, me, yes. Uh, could you remind me what is what about u and phi? Yes. Uh, so the phi you can think about it. That's uh, the scalar field profile, and uh, this u after you factor out this one of r uh, general behavior is uh, the gauge field behavior. Okay. So that's uh, just remember the u is for gauge field, the phi is for scalar field. For example, okay. yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. If uh, okay, so now get uh, the general solution. So the, the unit of the radius is in terms of uh, uh, and, uh, G times the gen generic scale, we can call it the W gauge boson mass if you relate that to electric wave center. 
And you solve this, then you can get some behavior. For example, let's look at the scalar behavior. You have this phi r. Um, so at a far away from the monopole, you have a phi r equals to one, which means that you just have your normal symmetry breaking vacuum. So symmetry is breaking. So this is normal to, to one, uh, v with f. Uh, but at the origin, you can say that the, the wave of the scalar field is zero. So which means like uh, at the origin of the top, top of the of uh, monopole, the symmetry is restored in the whatever you know, gauge symmetry. And uh, the uh, U field, uh, you, you have the at the origin equals to one, but uh, there's some tail, there's some exponential tail because uh, um, the relation between Higgs mice and uh, the double gauge boson mice will determine different uh, tail behavior. And in terms of topology, there's just uh, some uh, uh, second homotopy group, which is uh, Z, and uh, to explain why, to justify why this type of uh, object uh, can, 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 be, can be found and, uh, in some uh, more mathematical reason. So after that, after talk to Polyakov uh, monopole, then there are lots of uh, study. Uh, people, especially after uh, it's related to the, almost the same time as the grand unified theory, and the people realize that uh, you can have SU5 as one possibility, uh, spontaneously break to uh, some subgroup. Then again, you have this uh, uh, unbroken group or subgroup as U1, then you also have a uh, existence for, of a monopole. So there are lots of uh, searches uh, to think about a uh, gut monopole, for example. And, uh, and uh, also later on, re people realize that uh, check the abundance of the gut monopole and the, from the early universe point of view, realize that uh, in general, you should anticipate uh, there are too many uh, got a monopole in the, the current universe. As a result, uh, and uh, uh, Alan Goose and uh, figure out uh, maybe you can have some inflation uh, model to inflate the got monopole away, and uh, as a way to to invent uh, the inflationary cosmology. Okay, so there are lots of a very interesting story. And uh, but uh, but after that inflation story happens, then people say people kind of feel happy like oh, the got monopole, even though uh, theoretically it can exist, uh, but probably. Uh, in the current universe, its abundance is too small, and uh, so probably it's not easy to search for. Okay. Let me continue. Let me ask uh, the questions. Suppose, uh, suppose I, I don't know, because we have, we have not measured the proton decay, right? So, you know, since uh, that's one leading prediction of the brand new theory, suppose we don't know whether there is some new physics uh, um, beyond, beyond our standard model, for example. Then maybe we can ask the question is uh, what will be the monopole in the standard model, right? So the first you check the uh, homotopic group, right? So the, the standard model, the symmetry breaking is SU2 times U1 break to U1 EM. You check that, there is zero. So there is no mathematical uh, uh, consistent states for you to look for, right? In principle. But however, but however, we can still try to see how far we can go if we want to build some uh, electroweak monopole, right? So first uh, in the standard model, Higgs is a doublet and uh, maybe uh, after we educated about the top to polyp of monopole, we want to construct some triplet. So we can use the H dagger, uh, poly matrices vector times H, that will behave like a triplet. Right? Then you can, you can think about that as a composite triplet. And then you can define some uh, proportion to R height and uh, some function phi R. Then that basically the actual construction will be on there are some uh, field space or related to the theta and the phi in that specific way. Then you have this uh, uh, H dagger uh, sigma vector H behaves like a triplet. Okay. So then we have SU2 um, weak gauge boson. Then we can do the same thing as what we did for the previous case, AI uh, like that. But then there is one more thing about the hypercharge, what you do for that. So but we also know that whatever we do here for SU2, uh, W, uh, the choice of U1, Y should be matched such that in the far uh, 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 distance away from monopole, the unbroken gauge group is uh, uh, electromagnetic symmetry. So that will give you this specific uh, choice uh, for the B field, for the hypercharge field. Okay, so this is like a, a Lambu study of that, and also a little bit more study later about this uh, uh, configuration, right. Yes. What is theta here? Is it, I know it's an angle. So this is just, um, this is just a uh, 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 spherical coordinate angle. And uh, yeah, this is just a, and that uh, basically is uh, some function. Oh, I have a question. Yes. So why do you consider, uh, why do you diagonalize this sigma? Oh, uh, you mean this sigma? Yeah, what, what is this sigma first? 
Oh, it's polymer. Oh, it's and constant. And right why do you consider diagonalization of that? Uh, there's no diagonalization. There's no diagonalization. It's just, uh, oh, it's not? yeah, just match the index. Uh, oh, what so, is the then? Uh, what, what is the then? Oh, what is the this one? Yeah. Oh, I this is a yeah, yeah. This is a SU to the outlet, right? There is two component, and uh, you find out some overall function. Then you have some uh, two component, and you want to make sure that those two components uh, oriented uh, in different uh, set and file orientation follow this structure, uh, and to get that relation. X is a doublet, and uh, you can write down into H diagram. How do you determine the form of this design? How you de determine? You determine or oh, yeah. what is uh, to satisfy this condition? <laughs> okay. And what is that for relation? You mean this relation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So this uh, left side is a vector, right? This is a sigma one, sigma two, sigma okay. three, and then you put that in the middle. That uh, define a vector, and you want that vector match to this uh, R height. Oh, oh, so it's also a vector, a right? luminous vector. Uh, yeah, because I was surprised because this design is the same as the uh, eigenvector of the very monopole. I mean, very, um, yeah, very monopole, uh, yeah, diagonalization of Hamiltonian of that. Okay. So, yeah, maybe it's related. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, why there is no radial function in VI? There's no, there's no, you don't have to introduce. You don't, you don't have to that. Yes. You don't have to introduce the function of R like U yeah, or yeah. R. You don't need it. Yeah. It depends on R. What? F. Yeah. Phi. Phi. Yeah. yeah. Depends on the, R. the last uh, derivative of phi. It depends on R. Yes. This is the key. But what is the phi? Yeah. Yeah. It's phi. Yeah. Yeah. Same as in the key. Yeah. 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 Phi. It's a block. The other phi. It's a block. Uh, it's a single phi. Oh. Oh. Sorry. So oh. uh, th th uh, this is. Uh, this phi is not the phi in yeah, the no, it's not. It's, it's not. it's not. It's just the coordinate. It's a, yeah. oh, maybe I should. Have. Okay, I see. I see. So wait a second. Uh, now I'm confused. I thought <laughs> that was the phi function. No, no, it's not. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, oh, okay. so it's just coordinate. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. You should have called some other phi. Yeah. <laughs> That's the azimuthal angle. You'll be very good. So <laughs> I I justify I put a parenthesis r. That's a function. <laughs> not write this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, that's good point. So, so let me proceed. So in in uh, B, is it as a neutral angle or is it? Oh, it's a angle. It's a misangle. Okay. No function of it. But it's singular at, at, at R equals zero. Yeah, why is there no profile function? Mm -hmm. Uh, actually, I have one more slide late, later. I can come back. I will come back to this point and uh, in in other page. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Because also keep in mind that this is mixed. Uh, Mixed the uh, coordinate. This i is x, y, z. Yeah. This phi is a spherical coordinate. So, okay. so just to clarify, right? So your xi has the azimuthal angle, mm. right? Mm. And that is not a function of r. That's right? correct. It's just an angle. Mm. And so, so then the phi that's appearing here in your vi, that's the other phi. No, it's a it's a still. <laughs> That one is there's also angle. It's only yeah. So, so that, that's, that's a direct monopole. That's a direct monopole profile. Is that correct? The, the just the monopole. It's just the direct monopole. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Which is singular at your Yeah, right. yeah, in uh, principle. Uh, yeah. 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 So, yeah. You're, you're right. You're absolutely right. Is that right? So, yeah. so let me make sure. Uh, with the process as a defined as function showing up in this slide, so that's a function of R. Okay. Otherwise, it's not. It's just a simple <laughs> coordinate. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good. Uh, okay. Let me continue. Um, so now we can we can do the repeated the similar exercise, right? We say we have some contacts about the electric weak monopole. Then we put it into the light chain or try to calculate the mass of this object, right? Then you get a, a some derivative term. That's not important. There are some other term. This term is similar to the top of the polyakov monopole, right? But there is extra term. Uh, the, that extra term is like what. He was talking about is more like a Dirac monopole situation because you have this one over R to the four sits by the cell, and uh, then you do the integration that that uh, that is still diverging. So you still don't have a finite uh, electric weak monopole to talk about in the standard model. Okay, but then what Lambu was saying, oh maybe he say, oh but uh, you can consider not a mon not a single monopole but a monopole anti monopole and then connected by a Z string. So then he estimated what will be the energy or the total mass of the uh, monopole anti monopole system and uh, what it will be the lifetime and uh, so short answer is uh, there will be this will be like a few TV and in principle uh, people are also trying to estimate what is the production 
uh, rate at just on a high energy collider, for example, maybe uh, maybe there is a chance, but I don't have I don't think that there is a high production rate uh, for this object. Yes. Quick question: Why can't you adjust U function so that it, the origin, the cancellation of all one or other the Where is the wind? That's it. Uh, <laughs> so um, you can try, but, uh, but I think the the most important equation is here. <laughs> so you will. But this means that there is no topological protection. Doesn't mean that the object is infinite mass. That's two different things, I believe. Um, I think it's one of what I think of what is because B, there's no profile function in the immediate. Yeah, structure. but technically it's only one point, R equals zero. So you could adjust U so that it cancels out all the singularities and you're done. Technically it's finite mass. Yes. Very good. I think that's the motivation for what I'm talking about yeah. here. Um, and uh, you, can, you can think about uh, Yeah. You. I don't know. Yeah. So he's trying to say that uh, how about a change in this function such that also uh, cancel that. Uh, but both functions are positive. How do you cancel two positive functions? Oh, that's it. very good. Oh. <laughs> I didn't catch that. <laughs> okay, let me continue. So so obviously the, the, the that's the motivation, right? So we say we failed for the standard model, then we still want to get something. And uh, do you can see that? You can see that oh, maybe you can just make this U1 hypercharge embedded into some SU2. Maybe there's some more compact, uh, compact uh, coset space uh, to talk about. <laughs> then you maybe can do that, right? But there is another option is uh, you maybe can hide that, uh, suppose you do integration, right? You never touch that R is to zero. You truncate when you do the integration when R is very small. How do you do that? You hide that uh, uh, divergence uh, uh, behind the black hole even, even the horizon. So you just trying to say that you hide hide behind that. Then you say that uh, there may be some uh, Planck uh, uh, GR physics to take care of that, but you never say that. So 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 therefore you can still justify that you can looking for some states. Um, so, so only with low end physics standard model and the GR, no any other new physics to talk about. Then we can say what kind of uh, states you can get. Right. But but you know. For any of this, you don't need the SU2 part. You could just declare that the ionic black holes are situated to JR and move on with life, right? Uh, how do you get rid of uh, standard model interactions? Well, they're, they're there, but like you could just you could just talk about the Rax monopole and just stick it inside a black hole ah. and set a black hole carries magnetic charge. I will get that. That's uh, I think inevitably you will talk about the electronic sector. Okay. Okay. And uh, so that's the one, one thing. It's like uh, you, once we understand the uh, you see, you're right. Electric, so that's that's that one 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 thing I want to say. Yeah, it's there. So okay. So now let's get it a little bit of warm up for black hole. So usually we have a start with some metric. So usually we're more familiar with this uh, Schwarzschild black hole. Then you have the metric. Then you have a uh, twice of the G M. M is the mass, and uh, that will be the uh, uh, radius of the event horizon size. And, but sometimes you can also talk about the charged black hole, an RN black hole, and uh, um, then this one has a little bit more terms. When you uh, uh, solve for the metric, you have one minus some uh, 2GM over, but also you have a uh, uh, charged part. And uh, here I'm writing, uh, let's say a little bit more general, you could have electric charge, or you could have magnetic charge, for example. In a sense, you could also consider some dionic black hole, for example. So you get this term. So this is a very general solution to the uh, to the GR with some Maxwell uh, uh, action. Uh, so then, then there is a, you solve for this, then you realize that this is a little quadratic in R. So therefore, there are two zeros for this for this term, and the one we call it R plus. So we sometimes call that outer uh, horizon. Then there is R minus. That's inner horizon, but inner horizon is inside of the outer one, so usually we, we not uh, care that much about the inner one, so we care about this outer one. But also, you can see that there's some screwed up relation. Um, when the black hole, for example, the mass is equal to this kind of extreme extremal mass, which is uh, roughly speaking the charge times the Planck scale, and uh, when the black hole is equal to the extremal um, charge uh, or mass, then the black hole, will, we call that extreme black hole. The uh, difference, the, the interesting thing about extreme black hole is uh, 
the surface gravity at the event horizon is zero. So when we have the zeros, the thermodynamic rule for black hole, basically we also see that the black hole temperature is zero at that uh, extreme black hole. So that means that we want to talk about like a charged black hole, and uh, we also sometimes call the uh, extreme or non-extreme black hole. And, uh, get that. Okay. So now, first uh, question is uh, you can ask uh, in the standard model is uh, how about the electric charge of the black hole? Right. So I'm saying that uh, this is a little bit boring in the following sense uh, because the uh, the so-called Schrodinger effect. So you can ask. Uh, suppose you have a uh, let's uh, let's talk about extreme black hole because. Uh, uh, usually, if you think about there are some black hole existing in the in the universe, it will have a Hawking evaporation, and eventually it will gradually reach to the extreme of states if it's Rn black hole. If it's ordinary black hole, it will take a long enough time, it will disappear. It will just Hawking uh, give uh, evaporate away. Right? So, so because of the Schrodinger uh, effect, uh, you can ask uh, what is the electric field at, at the uh, uh, radius of the event horizon. And that will be uh, M Planck cubic divided by the extreme black hole mass. And uh, you just require up to gauge coupling E, and that electric figure is, uh, 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 for example, you want to uh, be, uh, uh, be less than, for example, actually less than uh, the electron mass, and such that uh, you forbid the Schrodinger uh, production, then you say that the extreme black hole should be less than 10 to 8 uh, solar mass. So that means that for anything like a uh, lighter extreme black hole, then the Schrodinger per production will discharge the electric uh, charged black hole. So you don't anticipate that those charges will stay there for um, for that long. So so that's why that's one reason that we 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 cannot uh, uh, this electric charge way is not that uh, interesting for the for the sake of uh, black hole mm, in the standard model for the yeah. Well, it can take quite a while for a black hole to evaporate enough to reach the extreme state, right? So, so, the, you know, but, but, so you did analysis using extreme case, but uh, 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 it's produced, it's not extreme, then it right. takes a very right. long time to decay, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for astrophysical black hole, it takes a very long time, as you can see, right? The mass is very heavy, the temperature is, uh, is small, but uh, here we are a little bit more in primordial black hole. In primordial black hole, the, the mass is not uh, also physical size, yeah. and uh, even uh, it's uh, it's uh, take a take a uh, long more time. What I mean is like less than one second for I something see. like a, a gram size uh, black hole, I for see. example, then yes. reach to the Very extreme good. states, okay. and uh, so it's just a different. Term. Yeah. Excuse me. What yeah. what is the uh, uh, mass of the black PVH in your expectation? Or in your in we are you for my interest. So, so that's a very good question. So, so if you know the BPH, BPH, uh, so uh, that is for the long charge the one, right? So usually people talk about that. When you have the black hole, the primordial black hole is the charged one. Um, you can from Planck's Planck mass all the way to around the uh, around the maybe ten to fifteen gram still allowed. Mm -hmm. So there is a huge parameter. Possibly, yeah. Uh, Depending on the on the amount of PV. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm talking about the I'm talking about the satisfied the dark matter and the density one. Even for that, okay, with, with that in mind. But, uh, but here we don't need to talk about that. Okay, so then we want. Um, so now that's kind of justification to us to think about the magnetic charge of the black hole in the standard. Okay. Uh, so first uh, we just discussed. Uh, oh, there is no finite energy multiple to talk about, right? So that means that in general, you don't need to worry that much about the Schrodinger discharge because there is no, no other finite mass object to be carry that charge for you to talk about discharge, right? And uh, so, but maybe you say, if you really care, maybe you say, oh, there is a dark multiple, for example, right? So if that is, 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 is a state in your spectrum, for example, then you also need to check uh, my magnetic field on the event part that is, uh, is less is uh, not that large compared to the gamma monopole mass square, for example. Right. So that will set some constraint if I need my charge to be about 10 to 6. But if we really just try to say, oh, only have a standard model plus GR, then you say there is no gamma monopole, then you also don't need to care about this. So then Q can be up to T Q like one or two. Okay. So that's just one statement. Okay. So then there is one very interesting thing about the uh, electroweak symmetry in B field. So let me 
just uh, so that's a study there. There's still ongoing study along this direction. And uh, um, so let's 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 uh, let's let, let, let's just expand the uh, SU2 gauge interaction in this a little bit messy way, right? Including Higgs here. Uh, what uh, this IJ is just a space and uh, no time, right? For example. So let's concentrate this one and this is a uh, uh, trivial expansion, uh, right? So you can see that there's some interaction FIJ, F is a photon, W is a uh, W gauge boson, Z is Z gauge boson, right? So especially concentrated after expansion, you have FIJ, WI plus WJ curve, right? So that means that uh, you, you look at that, uh, this is uh, W1, W2, and uh, you can think about the uh, one, the two, they are X and Y component of the W gauge boson. And you can think about uh, suppose I have a B field uh, in the Z direction, which means you have a F12 component for the photon. Right? So then you can see that F12 that enters into the off diagonal entry. And uh, then you see that the determinant of this, if the F12 is too large, the determinant of this will be, will be negative. Then you will see that that prefers to have a, my W1 or W2 develop some of the mutation value. Right? So you, you, you basically this suggests that uh, you need to recheck uh, what's uh, what's your micro of the uh, of the electroweak uh, sector in the magnetic uh, field, right? And uh, so people try to calculate more, ca more carefully, but uh, a rough uh, estimation would be you want to the B field. Uh, if the B field is higher than the Higgs mass square, then that preferred to have electroweak symmetry to be restored. So, so you can think about this in terms of lambda levels. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think you're also right. Oh, that's 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 good. Point. So basically, you think about the lambda level, then you can see that uh, for fermion, then you have some uh, that cancellation for spin one. You can even get more negative. You're, you're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. Good point. Yeah. Okay. So so basically, this uh, this uh, uh, study tells you that if your magnetic field is too large and um, uh, higher than the Higgs mass square. Then you you need to say that you prefer the electrical symmetry to be restored. So that's a that's just a fact, right? So now you can plug uh, some number. You say I have some extreme magnetic black hole, and what is the B field? So that will be proportional, inversely proportional to the charge. Why? Because of the uh, you you have the charge in the numerator, but uh, when you increase the charge, it's extreme black hole. You you also increase the event horizon radius size, and uh, that uh, size is a square in the denominator, right? And uh, such that uh, eventually it's inversely proportional to the charge for extreme magnetic black hole. So that means that you put a higher charge, then the magnetic field is, is smaller. So therefore, you maybe have some ordinary uh, magnetic black hole. Right? But, uh, but when you have the charge to be less than some, uh, some number here, 10 to 32, then you have the, uh, you prefer around the event horizon, the electric symmetry to be restored. Okay, so that's the. That's kind of the E1, E1, one of the interesting part. So now what I want to show you is uh, trying to try to put uh, those uh, sign of the GR put together and uh, solve the solve the system and uh, to give you what will be it looks like, what will be the mass because because this mass is uh, in some sense is uh, it's is well defined and this state is well defined. You no no unknown physics to talk about, right? So so that's that's why I found it interesting. But however, I can only calculate it for QX2, uh, because uh, QX2, that's a basically top of particle of one, you can have a spheric configuration. For Q bigger than two, generically, there are some nice paper by Alan Goose and Weinberg. Basically, they say that you need some long, long spheric configuration to, to, to get some large magnetic charge of the object. So which mean, just means that the calculation is more difficult. Doesn't mean that there is non-existence of that, right? Okay, so now let's say that I want to calculate the QX2. So then uh, just uh, go through a few slides and uh, we don't care that much about the details. Uh, just to say, oh, you need parameters, the metric, some function, MR, PR. Uh, and then there is Einstein here, but actually, and then there are some of MITRE. MITRE contain electro weak part. We don't care for this talk for about QCD. Um, then you make some, uh, uh, some function FR, which will be the, the one function to a, to a uh, parameterize the metric, then also some PR function, right? Then the automatical mass will be whatever this function at, uh, at infinity after you solve the equation for motion. So again, for the uh, for the mitre part, which is electric sector, so we do the same thing like what uh, Lambo uh, did, right? So here you can say that uh, 
this phi is also visual coordinate very clearly because now I'm using rho r for the Higgs function now. <laughs> so there is no no confusion anymore. For <laughs> so, um, the WHG uh, field, I use fr. Okay, so it's just uh, give your mind. So here is just trying to trying to demonstrate that you could uh, do some kind of rotation, uh, SU two rotation with uh, theta and the phi dependence to demonstrate that. Uh, uh, eventually, uh, at a at a far region, it's just uh, basically you are talking about the uh, photon field, and uh, uh, but the the field is zero. Yeah. Okay. So so then the system is not that complicated. It's just uh, uh, some field, and uh, there is if you count, there are some first differential equation, two double differential equation. Uh, totally need a five boundary condition. You put those five boundary condition together, uh, but uh, just pay attention to this uh, one over r to the four term that right, we were keep talking about. So basically, the simple answer for this question is uh, you just uh, use R H the event horizon radius to cut it off you know, to get the like, final answer. <laughs> okay. So after uh, you 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 solve that, you also uh, anticipate like a uh, uh, two type of solutions for those. Uh, uh, so you anticipate to get two types of solutions. So the first type is the, the boring magnetic charged black hole. You know, since you have the profile for the um, for the scalar field Higgs to be one, which means just constant electroweak symmetry broken vacuum throughout outside of the black hole. Then you just get a normal one. The normal uh, RN magnetic charged black hole is uh, uh, for about this four square root of four pi. It's just a Planck one over e. Right. So basically, it's a magnetic. Uh, Coupling times uh, the Planck mass, that's the mass. But uh, this is uh, electromagnetic, is electromagnetic coupling, so it's one over E, right? But uh, when we solve for this uh, new another solution, which uh, which will be uh, which uh, which will contain part two parts, but concentrate on the bigger part, which is the black the the, the so called black hole mass. The the other part you can think about is hair mass. The black hole mass basically uh, you can you can see that get extreme. Uh, it's basically a hypercharged magnetic black hole. And, uh, but we also know that the hypercharged gauge coupling is uh, larger than electric charge. So therefore, the magnetic charge is smaller. Magnetic coupling is smaller because of one over that. Right? So as a result, uh, the extreme of um, hypermagnetic uh, black hole is uh, lighter than the uh, electromagnetic charged one. So that's the reason this state is preferred. And uh, when you solve for the for this uh, standard bus GR and system, and uh, um, okay, so now he's just uh, I'm just doing some numerical result for for the profile. You can see that uh, we're talking about a very, very for this extreme black hole. Uh, we're talking about a very very hierarchical scale. We have a Planck size, Planck mass, right? Because that's the uh, Q equals to two. That's like a Planck size, uh, and also have electroweak scale. So I have to use some log scale to talk about uh, uh, separation. So, but basically, you can say that uh, the nr is just to control the metric. The rho r is uh, uh, the Higgs wave. So Higgs wave at a very far away is uh, broken, and uh, then in, inside is uh, restored. And uh, the rough scale is uh, some uh, uh, weak scale, weak size. So the anticipated electric wave symmetry is uh, uh, restored. And uh, and we can also calculate some uh, number. I believe those numbers should be. Real number for this object, <laughs> real prediction. <laughs> you anticipate the QX2 magnetic black hole, the hair, the electric hair, the black hole, the mass will be like this. The hair part will be like TEV. What, uh, uh, what is hair? What is hair? Hair means, uh, uh, means like uh, there is a long trivial scalar profile. So it's not uh, like an a ordinary uh, uh, RN black hole that you just have a long range force, right? So we have the Coulomb force, so that's why we can address some long range force and charge. Okay. But here, you also have a, a, a small profile for the Higgs field, right? So that we, we call that hair. That's an additional, it's additional yeah. stuff on the hang around the outside of the black. No. Yeah. Um, the, the radius of the black hole is set by the electroweak scale. Is that correct? Because you no. are... So the event horizon is an extreme black, hypercharged magnetic black hole, is set by QX2. So it's set by uh, it's set by the Planck one oh, or that's, that's a log scale. Right? This is log scale. That's oh, why I'm here. That's, oh. that's a, yeah. That's why I'm saying that there is I'm plotting like a, a seventy orders of magnetic <laughs> <Log scale. laughs> you know, in radius. Yeah. Can you tell us for that black hole what is the size of the black hole compared to the Planck scale then? Uh, 
What is the radius? What the radius is uh, twice, uh, it's just uh, up to, up to uh, two pi over E is just uh, uh, twice times that times one over Planck size. So it, it's Planckian? It's Planckian, yeah. Okay, but then can you trust the, um, do you feel comfortable trusting this oh, analysis exactly. because it's- uh, Because it's used to two, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, so you may be worried about some quantum gravity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yes, yeah, I agree with you. And uh, uh, so, so that means, uh, that almost means that we need either some other operator which is a uh, made of uh, R mu nu, R square. Yeah, I use that yeah, language, right? So, or you could just make Q much bigger. That's right, that's right. So if uh, let, let me skip this. Suppose we make a Q large, right? ah. then you'll be more comparable to, to this one. But unfortunately, we can also not do the separate calculation. But at least we can do the uh, estimation. Uh, there are two, and you can see that the, the center part, there is some hypercharged black hole mass. And the outside, the, there is electroweak uh, Symmetry restoration, so there will be some vacuum energy, and that vacuum energy will be uh, defined by that, and uh, then you that still give you some general scaling about these states, what uh, what is the mass as a function for Q, right? And uh, then just give you some number. Um, again, if you want to have the existence of this here, you want to make sure satisfy that the the uh, the magnetic field that the event horizon is higher than the x mass square that is this upper bound of uh, uh, for the charge and. Uh, you want to be a smaller charge, less than 10 to 32. So roughly speaking, you have the, primo, uh, the magnetic black hole less than Earth's mass. Then you should anticipate there, that those uh, magnetic black holes, they should have electric weak hair. Uh, the electric weak symmetry should be restored uh, around the event horizon of the black hole. So that's basically I'm, I'm the main message I want to give, give you guys. So the, then there are some other interesting about the, uh, 2D mode, which is a uh, come back to his uh, question about the land of land of labels, which is very interesting. And that will change in the how this type of black hole doing Hawking radiation. Let me don't 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 worry about that. And also don't worry about the uh, the other uh, another way uh, which I call we call it a Q monopole ways to hold the magnetic uh, charges together. And also with very interesting, you can you can you can check some uh, some papers for that. Let me just uh, yeah, just uh, okay, but maybe maybe. This, this is a kind of a full stop, maybe I just uh, uh, two minutes to mention. Uh, let's say, suppose you have this monopole, right? You still care. I'm, I'm, I'm really thinking about those monopole, uh, magnetic monopole existing in our current universe, okay? I'm not talking about it like, uh, on paper. And uh, so you're looking for, how do you look about that? So you can say that uh, you need to use, because they're so heavy, the number density is so small, right? This front line. Uh, so then you need also physical objects to, to, to potentially stop them. They may be accumulated them. They may be hung around inside the earth. Right? Then you do the very naive thing, right? So how about, uh, how about I have a earth, does the earth contain monopole moment? Right? Very simple question. And uh, then, you, then we check, uh, uh, then there is a paper by Gauss, 1838, literally. Gauss has a paper, it's in different language, right? So that's why we use the translated one. So literally, he said that, that one may determine uh, when you have a better precise observation than the current one offered, the map may determine whether uh, precise uh, representation requires some long vanishing of P0. P0 is uh, the monopole term, mono, monopole moment term or not. Then the translator, they make uh, some comment. Gauss is discussing here the possible existence of magnetic monopole. It's a remarkable how important for it. Results uh, for this mathematician, <laughs> and uh, but also to our surprise, after I don't know how many years, uh, nobody even checked the Earth's magnetic field whether it contains monopole <laughs> component or not. So then we said, okay, let's uh, let's uh, let's check that. Then we check some satellite data. Then there also some funny things like uh, at the beginning we found monopole. <laughs> <laughs> With 20 sigma, I tell you, that's like, a, then we say, oh, that's kind of, it. so we use a uh, law, right? I mean, what, uh, that's, I, we're not a ex real experiment, is, I, we don't know, but we know the Gauss law. So we put some Gauss law, we measure what is the flux, and uh, we tell, tell what's the charge. But it turns out that uh, those satellites, they are, the height is not a constant. The speed, the surface you are measuring is not a constant, the radius to the center. Then you need to take that into account. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to see that there are some uh, uh, hydro related uh, things you need to rescale that basically. And uh, because at the beginning we didn't do that, we say, oh, for the uh, calculator, the flux 
No, oh, it's not zero number. <laughs> the biggest discovery in the century. <laughs> but it turns out not. Okay, so, <laughs> so after, after you understand what's, uh, what's going on, then you realize that uh, then we just quantify the error bar and the blah, blah, then we just say, uh, uh, since the final answer is the magnetic charge inside the Earth is less than 10 to 19 uh, in, in that unit. So let me stop here and uh, yeah, thank you. Questions? Do you assume the monopole is in the standard model computation? In, in the standard model? So ah. in your monopole model? Yes. Do you assume the non computation? Say, say again. Uh, non configuration or standard model configuration. Yes. So in that case, so it is the boundaries. So uh, I naively expect that the type looks like that type of behavior. Why? Why? Monopoly. Uh, since two, two monopoles are boundaries, so it's oh, not monopoly. Monopoly. Yes, yes, yes. That's I call it. So, uh, so, so here I'm really talking about isolated model. And uh, I'm not talking about the Lambu's uh, uh, dumbbell configuration. I'm not talking about that. Uh, because that one is what I mean. Uh, 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 I'm not talking about this object. I'm not talking about this object. I'm talking about an ob object. Uh, just there. point to like one for Yeah, just point to like one. Yeah. I think it is expected on the kind of practice scale or kind of heavy. <laughs> It's uh it's very heavy. It's a uh, it's plant it's about plant mass and uh, very heavy. So that's why the the search is also different from gut monopole situation. Then in in a part of the black hole part, mm. why, why did you assume for the non non spin card? Oh, I see. So that that is that uh, uh that is a paper by uh Goose and Wamber and Eric Wamber and uh, to prove. I don't know, it's a rigorous proof to prove that you cannot have a, a spheric uh, uh, configuration when you have a magnetic charge to be about two. But it's monopoly. A black hole is not spin. Ah, black hole is not spin. Um, black hole. <laughs> sorry, black hole, when we uh, at least our normal, uh, sorry, for the not a long curve. For curved black hole, it's a not spherical. But for the for the short shadow black hole and also RN black hole, we are considering here the aspirate. So that's why we we, we can calculate some spherical case. Okay. 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 Other questions? Uh, maybe you mentioned this, but the, how does the topological stability condition change when we become a black hole? I mean, it seems you you saying you can hide the the infinite the naive infinite action that you can for a standard model. Can you understand that? I think I see, I see, I see, I see. So I, I think the simple answer is uh, um, yeah, the simple answer is uh, it's just a hyper mag, hypercharged magnetic black hole. And in a sense, it's very similar to Dirac monopole. And uh, but uh, you just uh, just uh, have the uh, energy stored uh, in the inside of the black hole, basically. There is no topological reason for that, and uh, for the hyper, for the yeah, for this pure hypercharged magnetic battery. Well, do you do you have a mechanism in mind for these black holes to be created? Yeah, in, like cosmology or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so that's this slide, and uh, so we do have some uh, mechanism, not a specific for magnetic monopole. Um, we are talking about some hidden charge the black hole, and we do have some mechanism like that. But when we talk about this, uh, um, our magnetic black hole, and we do have something in, in, in mind, but we, we still want to work it out and uh, try, try, try to say, yeah, how, how, how likely. Because there are several situations, whether you form mono first or you form black hole first or you form at the same time. Right. And uh, so, yeah, there, there are several possibilities. So, so most of this should be worked out, in my opinion. Yeah. 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 Yeah